Greetings to you, the Gloria Day family, on this holy night. On behalf of the church council and staff, I send you wishes for a peaceful and blessed Christmas. That I am here in the sanctuary a few days before Christmas, recording this message, separated from you who are at home, speaks to our profound sense of dislocation. The dictionary de describes dislocation as a painful injury which immobilizes a joint, that place where two or more bones come together. What an apt description for the injury to our community joints, which we all feel so profoundly. We have been immobilized from meeting together with friends and family in our homes, in our churches, in all those places where we normally meet to be together, to celebrate, to feast, to worship, to pray. Our head knows and agrees that it must be so for all the right reasons, to protect the most vulnerable, to protect our healthcare workers and our healthcare system. But even though our rational selves agree, our hearts still feel the painful dissonance of being apart instead of together this Christmas. When I turn to the Christmas story, I think of Joseph, who was also not where he imagined he would be told to take his wife and travel to Bethlehem to be counted, he is forced to leave his home, his carpentry business, and his friends. It must have seemed so unfair. And we, we can't help but acutely feel all that we have lost or have been separated from. I'm sure that Joseph also grumbled along the way, as he led the donkey on the rocky, winding trails, trying to avoid the bumps and potholes for his pregnant Mary's sake. After an arduous journey of 90 miles, the distance between Nazareth and Bethlehem, then along the heavily forested Jordan River Valley inhabited by wild boars and bears, and on through the Judean desert, where they braved scorching heat and rain during the day and freezing temperatures at night. Then finally, over the hills surrounding Jerusalem, they arrived at Bethlehem. But the hardships did not end when Joseph and Mary arrived at Bethlehem. Under normal circumstances, they would have expected to stay in the spare bedroom of a relative or another Jewish family. But the overcrowded town forced Joseph to seek lodging at a primitive inn, which could only provide a cave used for housing animals. I try to imagine what it would have been like for Joseph in that night how he would have wanted so much more for Mary and her child. And I imagine him, after all that they had endured on their grueling journey, standing there at the manger, not complaining, but giving thanks. The child whom the angel told him would save people from their sins was born child was safe and resting peacefully, and his heart was full of gratitude. And I imagine him praying, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us thus far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and life. 
in giving thanks, did Joseph realize that it is precisely at the point that the night is longest and darkest that the world turns toward the dawn of a new day? We don't know, but forgetting what lay behind him and laying aside his worry about the, what the future still held, Joseph became present to this moment. He became present to this child shining with the radiance of Christ. Precious sisters and brothers, beloved friends and siblings in Christ, our displaced pandemic joints will heal. We will be together again, hug our grandchildren again, have breakfast with a friend, gather at the table again. But tonight, on this holiest of nights, we are invited to join Joseph at the manger and give thanks to God who has brought us this far along the way to meet the Christ child who has come who has come to save us, to bless us, and to guide us into the path of love and life. gospel for the feast of Christmas according to Luke. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Friends, as is our tradition, the time has come for us to light our candles and prepare our hearts for the singing of Silent Night. And so I invite you to take your candles, to light them. If you're at home with family, to pass the flame one to another. And if you're at home alone, I want you to imagine receiving the flame here from the sanctuary, as I take the flame from the Christ candle on the Advent wreath and pass it to you at home. And I want us to imagine the flame being passed from hand to hand, one to another, the flame being passed from household to household. And in this way, our hearts are joined in prayer, in worship, in adoration of the Christ child on this holy night. And so we lift our voices as the choir leads us in the singing of silent night. <laughs> Thank you. 